there is an Emily Smith throwaway injury boost and another confirmation coming in from the national team coach of Norway on Martin Odegaard that's going to excite very many Arsenal fans all over the world. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Rokani David is my name and this is the Arsenal News Show whereby you're going to let you know about Emily Smith Rowe's injury progress. When is he going to come back? And when you hear the word injury boost, you know that he is not far away from playing for Arsenal again. Smash the like button, comment and share. We are left with 300 subscribers to hit 8,000 and subscribers on this channel and guys continue and continue subscribing to this channel because this is what makes us better each and every time you subscribe how do you subscribe lower right bottom corner smash the subscription button by smashing and hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified each and every time I upload a video onto this channel and that is Rokani Media Football. Now, if you are an Arsenal supporter, you very much know how much Emily Smith Rowe is important to your side. One, he is a goal scorer coming in from the wide areas and he was shifted from the central midfield area after the arrival of Martin Odegaard and he was switched onto the left attacking side of the midfield. And obviously, last season, you saw him score 10 Premier League goals. 10 Premier League goals at the age of 21. That was something great for a player like Emily Smith Rowe. And guess who he scored against? He scored against Chelsea. He scored against us. He scored against Manchester United. He scored against Tottenham Hotspur. And not only those teams, but I saw him score against Aston Villa, West Ham, and very many teams. And in such a situation where Arsenal is, you need a player like him who is a giant killer. Obviously, Emily Smith Rowe has shown us that every time he's playing against big teams, he's one of those players who really come out and put out what we call the required effort to really shock those players all those teams they are really going ahead to face so this season starting with him being injured really costed Arsenal a lot I believe him coming back will be the best push to Gabriel Martinelli so he got an injury, it's a calf injury, and the decision was taken late because they knew that maybe he would recover the decision was taken in September for him to undergo a surgery and we are told that he was going to return very soon now there is some good news that is really coming in from the camp arsenal camp as far as emily smith throwaway is concerned they've come out and really told us that Emily Smith Rowe hopes to make his Arsenal comeback at the start of January as he continues to recover from groin surgery. Smith Rowe will be part of the squad that is traveling to Dubai for warm weather training camp. That is what Simon Collins is really telling us and is a correspondent of Arsenal at the Evening Standard. And that confirms to you that obviously this guy is really going to return very very soon talking about january one will say january is very 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 far from now but today is 18th and we are not going to be seeing any game of football being played especially in the premier league or carabao cup not until the world cup ends and carabao cup returns on the 21st of the 21st of december as united hosts Burnley. remember arsenal was knocked out by Brighton. What does that mean? It means Arsenal is not going to go on and play any game before the 27th when they host West Ham at the Emirates Stadium. So that means they are going to play like one or two games and they will be into January, meaning that Emily Smith Rowe will be available. So Emily Smith Rowe might only miss two Arsenal games and him returning is a very big boost for Arsenal. Do you know why? Gabriel Martinelli is in the Brazilian World Cup team that is in Qatar. You never know what is going to play there. He might find himself dislodging Vinicius Jr. in certain games or coming in and really playing some good quality games. And you never know whether he's going to get an injury or he's going to come back tired. And you know, teams like Manchester United have come out and told us that every player that is in the World Cup is going to be given seven days of rest. Now, when you look at Brazil, they might even play up to the finale or the semi-final, meaning that count from 18th up to 25th, that's when Gabriel Martinelli will return at Arsenal. Him returning at Arsenal, what does it mean? It means 
he needs a rest because he has been playing almost every game. I've not seen Martinelli miss out on any single game of Arsenal. Those that has not played, he came on and played close to 15 minutes. That game of PSV when they came in at the Emirates because he really had a very bad problem with his body and the manager told us that he was a little bit under the weather but came in and played some 15 minutes so i've seen him play every arsenal game and arsenal have played six uefa europa league games you get and uh 14 premier league games all of those 20 games martinelli has gone ahead to feature especially into the Premier League games. They have started every Premier League game that is Gabriel Martinetti. So going to the World Cup, that will mean a lot of fatigue for this young man. Obviously, Emily Smith-Rowe comes back in a very right time for him to come out and start ahead of Emily Smith, sorry, ahead of ahead of Martinelli because Martinelli would need some rest. Even if he returns and he'll be wanting to play because I know Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli coming in from the World Cup will tell Mikel Arteta, we want to play obviously they've laid a very good foundation for them to compete for the premier league title and i don't expect them to come out and say no to the manager and this decision lies in what we call the hands of the manager to come in through and really say no 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 please you need to rest let eddie Ketia start and emily smith will start so the return of emily smith row in january is going to be very important and when you look at the fixtures of arsenal obviously they are really going to go on and really need the player like martinelli with them now simon collins continue to tell us that emily smith is not expected to take part in full training right away in dubai but he's hoped by the end of the trip he will rejoin the group now i believe that arsenal are really one of those teams that are really going to come in through and show us a lot look at El Nini. When El Nini got an injury, they told us that he's going to return on the 26th of December. Guess what? He has even played some minutes for Arsenal. He returned at the beginning of November, played very good, very good number of minutes for Arsenal. So I believe even Emil Smith Rowe, he might return before January and play some big part into the Arsenal time into the Arsenal games that are really going to go on and play and he is really one of those players that is needed to go on and really rise up to the question because we know that he has goals in him if he plays then the rest of the games like the the rest of the games the 19 games in the Premier League he can come in and really get Arsenal 10 goals Arsenal right now need more people to score other goals as Jesus is tied on five Bukayo Saka I think is also tied on five um Odegaard is tied on six Premier League goals. Who else? Jacques has three. Martinelli has like four. So it shows you that if Martinelli, sorry, if Emily Smith Rowe comes in and starts to score goals, it will be a very huge boost for Arsenal. Not so. Arsenal fans, I know you are missing this guy who goes by the names of Gabriel Martinelli. No, not Emily Smith Rowe. So when you look at Kevin Campbell on Arsenal on Emily Smith Rowe. He has come out and really said the following. If I don't know, Kevin Campbell is one of the center forwards that really went ahead to score very many goals for Arsenal during his spell. And I believe he was even there when Arsene Wenger was here. Then he has told us that we are going to need a strong squad and we are going to need Emily Smith Roy. He's been training. He's going to be like a new signing. We are going to need him back and ready to go. He's going to have a very prominent role of a very prominent role to play. Now, you've heard it that there, he's going to come and he's going to be seen as a new signing. That's a fact of life. Emily Smith Rowe, if you watched him play last season, he diversified all odds. And it shows you how good Mikel Ateta is. He knew that Emily Smith Rowe cannot compete with Martin Odegaard, however much the other previous season, before Odegaard came in through. Emily Smith Rowe was played as a central attack midfielder. He played very well and had a very brilliant half of a season. Then when Odegaard came in through, Smith Rowe was shifted to play off the left attacking side of the midfield. And guess what? He gave us the best as we foot as we football supporters. I don't support Arsenal, but there are some players in Arsenal I really love. And for the eye test, I confirm that he really went ahead to pass it. That is a man who goes by the names of Emery Smith. Rowe. Now, when you look at him being referred to as a new signing, obviously, that's what I've been explaining to you. Though for him, he has really put it in a nutshell that he is going to be like a new signing. There is some firepower he brings in and he has shown us that he is really good at scoring goals. And obviously, he's not a selfish player. That's one thing I really like about him. And I told people that 
Emily Smith Rowe has a higher ceiling than Marcus Rashford before Eric Ten Hag came in here because Rashford before Eric Ten Hag came in at Manchester United he was a very selfish player. That's why I went ahead to say that I would rather have Emily Smith Rowe because when he really reaches the 18 yards box area of the opponent, he decides what to do. He sometimes goes for short and sometimes finds a pass for a very well-placed Arsenal player to place that ball into the back of the net. And that's what Rashford couldn't do. He was too selfish. Emily smith is not a selfish player. However much, he cuts from, however much he cuts from the left attacking side of the midfield through the half spaces and approaches the 18 yards box area or the final third, of the final third he is always a lot. He doesn't do aimless passing like Rashford. So I believe it's always something great to have Emily Smith throw back. And that's going to be one of the boasts that Arsenal are really going to go on and really have into their squad. And let me show you. I think I'll show you this at the end of this video because I want to show you why you guys need Emily Smith throw back. But I think let me do it now. Let me do it now. Let me do it now. Let me show you the fixtures that Arsenal are really going to have in January and show you why you need Emily Smith Rowe to return very, very soon. Because Martinelli is not going to come and kill off every game for Arsenal. That's out. Let no one lie to you. Emily Smith-Rowe is a more killer, has a killer instinct in him more than Gabriel Martinelli. For much I believe that Gabriel Martinelli is really good, but there are certain games he's not going to come in here and help you. Not so. That's what I really believe as Rock and David here onto the here onto the um, here onto the Rokani media football now i want to show you something here look at these fixtures this is why even Ke <coughs> kevin campbell is talking about the return of emily smith throwy as soon as we're going to be playing western on 26th of december then brighton on the 31st leave alone these two games he might not be back according to what they are telling us. But 3rd June, they are playing Newcastle. Very huge game. Very huge game. 15th, they are playing Tottenham Hotspur away. Remember, between 3rd June and 15th, there is an FA Cup game in between there. That means Emily smith -Roy helps you to come in and play onto the left attacking side of the midfield. Now, Manchester United, 22nd June, Everton, Brentford, so when you look at the next one, two, three, four, five fixtures in January, Arsenal needs to go on and redo the needful and need MD Smith throw away because in February the UEFA Europa League returns. What does it mean on its return? Nothing can give you happiness onto your face other than Emily smith Rowe returning back and really being part of that Arsenal squad. Now, we leave, we leave him at that and let's get to a man who goes by the names of Martin Odegaard. Martin Odegaard, the captain of Arsenal that sealed the Arsenal breakup on the, uh, the World Cup break with Arsenal on table, scoring a brace against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Obviously, he's really one of those players that I really like. You know that. People who watch this channel know how much I really love Odegaard. To an extent that I told people, all I told them that Odegaard or Bruno Fernandes, on any day I go with Odegaard. If I might support Manchester United, but there are some players in Arsenal that I really love. Odegaard is really an exceptional player. He really has massive talent and he knows exactly what that number 10 should be doing and he doesn't really fail to go on and do the needful now the manager of the norwegian national team has said the following on odegaard he said he's entering his peak he said probably he's entering his peak he's been very stable at the high level for a long time enjoying more assists and goals lately overall his performance is a very good over a long period for arsenal and norway now Odegaard is going to be one of the world's best players. And trust me, the more this Arsenal side gets better, the more you're going to see the more of Odegaard. Why? The more Arsenal gets better, the more chances they are going to create. And you see his position. It's rare to find him onto the wide or in the half spaces. It's rare to find him in the half spaces. He's always near the penalty spot or in the teenage box area of the opponent in the penalty spot that's why you find him his positioning is good and he only cuts that side when the ball has really found him that side in the wide spaces all wide areas to come on and really get that ball 
and then pass it. But every time they are bringing a cross when he is in that area, it helps us not to have another player to go and really get that job done. Look at how he scored the two goals against Wolverhampton Wanderers. The one found him in the goal in the mouth of the goal, sublime cross, sublime square, and he tapped the back of the net. The second one, he was at the penalty spot. The ball rebounds back to him and he hits it in the back of the net. It shows you how talented this guy is and how Arsenal need Martin Odegaard. So I believe he is really nearing his peak. And at 20, 22, 23 years of age, I believe he's nearing his peak. And obviously, he's going to help Arsenal do a lot. And with Arsenal having various players like Martin Odegaard coming in to score very many goals, what does that send to you in the back of your mind? Just tells you that Arsenal are really having lots of sources of goals. And this is where I go back to, Matt, to the return of Emily Smith-Rowe. If Emily Smith-Rowe returns to and gets you 10 goals, obviously Arsenal is going to be a title winning side, meaning that they are, they are going to be having close to six players that can average 10 Premier League goals this season. Gabriel Jesus will score 10 plus because they already have five. Odegaard has six. He's going to score 10 plus. Martinelli has like four, five. I believe he's going to go on and really score 10. Bukayo Saka will score 10. You get if Emily Smith Roy comes in and also gets you 10, uh, which other player can can really reach 10 goals in Arsenal? I believe in um, Grant Xhaka, he can because he has three Premier League goals in the remaining games. He can gather some seven and obviously get Arsenal to the level where they're supposed to be. So, I believe Arsenal are really in a very good position, but before I sign out, there is something I'd forgotten to add on when I was talking about Emily Smith Roy. <laughs> Sorry about that. The return of Emily Smith Rowe leaves with the people who have seen Arsenal link to Mikalo Modric, Marcus Thuram, and very many other wide wingers playing off the left attacking side of the midfield in a lot of questions or in an ocean of questions. Do you know why? Emily Smith Rowe is a proven player under Mikel Arteta. He loves him. So, can Mikel Arteta go ahead and really spend 60 million euros to a player who is going to come out and really play or compete with Martinelli and Emily Smith Rowe? And I believe if I hear and confirm that Arsenal has gone ahead to make a bid or put there an offer to Shakhtar Donetsk for Mikhailo Modric, that means Modric is coming in to either sometimes in the line or play as a right attack midfielder for Arsenal sometimes because that's where Arsenal looks weak and I know he can go on and do it because he has a swift right foot and he's really a very fast player for Shakhtar Donetsk. So I believe that is going to be the only limitation. I'm going to see how Mikel Arteta is going to go on and really approach this. But Mikel Modric has come out in public and told the media that I really want to go on and really play for a side which goes by the names of Arsenal. And Race Nelson, the return of Emily Smith Rowe, puts Race Nelson into a position of whether to be played onto the left attacking side of the midfield or the right. Remember, Race Nelson came up in the game of. Nottingham Forest replacing replacing Bokayo Saka who had gotten an injury. Obviously, the boss said, go on and play. He scored a breast and created one goal. That is Rhys Nelson. And all of the goals he scored were really beautiful, beautiful. And he sent a very good message to the manager. So, I'm really perturbed on how Arsenal are going to go on and really approach this situation. Has Mikel Ateta got conv convinced that Rhys Nelson can come in and back up Bokayo Saka? All he needs Mokalo Modric. So we are here to see what is going to come in from the camp of Arsenal as far as the general transfer window is concerned. But the biggest story is that Emily Smith threw away injury boost. He returns in January to come on and really start up his career at Arsenal because this season, before we went to the World Cup break, he has not featured in any of Arsenal's games. They brought him and they played and he played like 10-15 minutes, but obviously he really went back onto injury, meaning that the physios had not gotten it right and they opted to go in and get him a surgery. So guys, your thoughts on Emily Smith throwaway injury boost are welcome in the comment section below. Do you think Martin Odegaard is nearing his peak as his national team manager is claiming into the comment section tell me what you think and a reminder if you want to know my world cup predictions i've already done a video that is that is coming this that i've, I've just done a video you can go on and really check it 
this video is going to come next after that video so guys tell me what you think about your world cup predictions and i've went with teams like argentina portugal and brazil i'm tipping them to go on and win the world cup so go there and tell me who do you think or who are you tipping to win the world cup may the Almighty lord bless you abundantly smash the like time smash the like button close to 200 times and don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe may the Almighty lord protect you abundantly i'm out